Integers make up a number system that is very useful for certain types of quantities. In this video, we will explore what integers are in the context of real-world situations where it makes sense to use integers for counting and measurement. Let's start with an example. There are two mounds of dirt and one hole in the ground at a construction site. What types of numbers can be used to count the mounds and the holes? We could use whole numbers to count one, two, three items, but that doesn't quite work. These two mounds of dirt are a different thing than this hole in the dirt. We could say there are two mounds of dirt and use two to count the mounds, but what about the hole? Is it zero? No. In fact, it's less than zero. This line indicates the ground is what we would call ground zero. So how do we count the whole? For this, we need a new numbering system, and this gives rise to what we call integers. Integers include the whole numbers zero and positive numbers one, two, three, etc but also includes a different class of numbers, negative numbers. Now we can go back to the mounds and holes and properly count them with integers. Each mound is a positive one, and the hole is a negative one. Let's look at another example. The fish is five feet below the water, and the seagull is 25 feet above the waterline. Use integers to describe their position relative to the waterline. You saw in the previous example that integers can be used to count certain types of objects. In this example, you'll see that integers can be used to make certain types of measurements, in this case, distance. Here we are looking at positions above and below the waterline. The seagull is 25 feet above the waterline, and the fish is 5 feet below the waterline. The relative positions of above and below are a hint that integers can be used. Integers include the positive whole numbers, negative numbers, and zero. Think of the waterline as representing zero. We can define that a position above the waterline is positive, and a position below the waterline is negative. This means that the gull is plus 25 feet above the waterline, and the fish is negative 5 feet below the waterline. If we now include a duck swimming on the surface of the water, in other words, on the waterline, then its position is at zero. Let's look at a final example. On a winter day in a given city, the low and high temperatures for the day are shown in this double bar graph. Describe these temperatures relative to zero degrees Fahrenheit. In previous examples, you saw how integers can be used for counting and for measurement. In this example, we look at data written in integer format. This double bar graph shows two different temperatures in integer format. Let's analyze these data points. First of all, the horizontal line represents zero degrees Fahrenheit. So this bar represents a temperature of 25 degrees above zero and this temperature represents eight degrees below zero. So in all three examples shown in this video, we saw positive integers and negative integers, but just as important, we had to identify a zero point that separated positive values from negative values. Values above the zero mark were positive integers and values below the zero mark were negative. In the next video, you'll explore how number lines can be used to display integers.